the content. We, we've seen who the, the context is, it's spiritual warfare. I mean, he's the one that's gonna deliver us. And we've seen that, the, that the, the target who we're talking to in the Lord's Prayer is God himself. But what is in the Lord's Prayer? What's the content of it? And, and I'll just briefly touch this because last week that's what we did. Basically, it's a checklist. Did yeah. you know life is more dangerous than, spiritual life is more dangerous than flying? And Jesus said, before you go out into all the storms, Here's the checklist. To help you make it, focus on me, worship me, find out the, the orientation of your life needs to be me as God the Father sitting on the throne, watching everything, even when you're asleep. He who watches over you neither slumbers or sleeps. I am taking care of everything. Check in with me, get reminded I'm in control. That's how we start. That's the first thing on the checklist. Then say, what do you want? with this body you purchased. I was bought at a price, I wanna glorify you. How do you want me to glorify you today? Reminds me of Priscilla Crigo. Do any of you remember Priscilla Crigo? I saw Roy come in. I got to call Priscilla when she found out she had lung cancer. Anna said, call Priscilla, she got a bad test. I said, do you want me to call her? She said, yeah. So I called and the phone rang, she picked it up. I said, hi Priscilla. She said, did you get the word? I said, what word? She said, how can I refuse a summons from my king to come home? I said, yeah, I was calling you about that. What a perspective. Why did she say that? Because she said, I was bought at a price. I want to glorify God. If he wants me to glorify him not being able to breathe, if he wants me to glorify him dying, I want to consecrate this body to glorify God because he purchased me at a great cost. That's a, a, a surrender. This is a submission on a daily basis to say, I want to do your will, and I want to know your will and seek and follow your will. It, they're connected, consecration and submission. It starts by saying, you own me, now what do you want me to do? It's on the checklist. You know, most of us don't even spend this long in the Word as I've spent talking about it. We are supposed to pause, orient, renew, and start every day saying, I want to live for what you left me on this planet for however many days I have to accomplish your will. That's why we're here. That's who Christians are, Christ followers. Then we rely on God's provision. We say, I can't make it through today. I can't even talk to people. I'm scared. I need boldness. I need strength. I, I need, and the Lord says, yes, this is more than your necessary food. This is how your soul is fed. This is how you have the joy and rejoicing. Rely on my provision. Come to my word, and then let me fill and overflow your life. And then we get to that part. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Bonnie and I were traveling, when I speak in places, usually when there's a little free time, they like to show us the, wherever we are. And we were, I was speaking in New Zealand and the people wanted to show us New Zealand. And somehow we got to a sheep ranch. There used to be more sheep in New Zealand than there were people. And so it was a sheep place and they were, they were showing the shearing process and the butchering, which was a little less, you know, it was, but I learned something that I, I'll always remember. The man that was telling us about the making of mutton to sell to England for all their lamb eating and everything else, he said, you know, it's curious. He says, when we skin a sheep, he said, it's rare that you don't find sheep covered with black and blue spots. And you know what he said? He said, sheep are like peaches. They bruise very easily. I thought, whoa. We're the sheep of his pasture. Did you know we go through life bumping, getting scraped, getting uh, you know, bitten all through life, and we are easily bruised and easily wounded and easily hurt. We're really sheep. We're like walking peaches. And you know what the Bible says? If we don't seek a cleansing of our relational wounds, that's where they come from, by the way, you know where hurts and sadnesses and sorrows and crises come from? People. It, it's, it's people that 
that steal from us or, or take away our job or cheat us out of this or ruin our lives or say something about us. It's people. And the Lord says, if you don't get daily cleansing of your relationships, then you're going to get them infected. And the infection usually breeds a poison called bitterness. And Hebrews 12 says that bitterness defiles everything in our lives. And so God says, on a daily basis, I want to flush every wound, every scrape, and I want it cleansed, and, and I want it kept from infection. Because you have to, and I have to, respond the same way that God did. God didn't say, oh, I'll forgive that one. I'm not going to forgive that one. I'll never forgive that one. Oh, that was really bad. I'm going to hold off on that one. He said, I completely forgive you of everything, past, present, future. That's how we have to respond to people. And that's, that's every day we flush our wounds. That means there is no one that we cannot look right in the eye. I saw someone this morning in the church that's quite upset at me, and I walked right up to them and smiled. They didn't know what was coming, and I just smiled at them. Because it doesn't matter what's wrong with them. It's not bothering me, because I won't let it get infected. You cannot let it get infected. You cannot let anybody's injuries allow bitterness to start because it ruins our relationship with the Lord. And then we need this protection of our mind, this, the evil one that's all around us, Satan. And finally, we have to seek God's glory.